Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back students. So today we will now look at another important uh, aspect about dislocation and particularly which gives rise to various uh, phenomena in materials, for example, strain hardening, strengthening effect and all these things. These arise because dislocations interact amongst themselves. So we will look at the relation which defines this relation and we will look at some special cases on how these dislocations interact to give you some idea and feel about the interaction of dislocations from which we, you can build up. In fact, Taylor hardening can also be deduced from this relation. So let's move on. So interaction between dislocations. And uh, when we are talking about interaction, it can be like you may have one dislocation, which has its own strain stress field. So it has its own stress field and because of it, it may be causing some effect on another dislocation. So it may be causing forces in this direction or also in the Z direction. So this will become FX, FY or FZ. And when I say F, Remember that it is per unit length. So although I will not explicitly write it as uh, per unit length, but we have to understand that for uh, dislocation, which is, you can say not of any finite length, or at least we are not considering any finite length, it can have uh, any amount of length. Basically, what I mean to say is that it is not any given length at the, from the beginning of the problem. So it can have a finite length, but not any known quantity. So we will call, always calculate forces per unit length. So it could be, the, so this is what is, uh, what we can term as dislocation interaction effect of one dislocation uh, onto this. And uh, for our uh, purpose, that is in our uh, written work, in our theories, what we will do is we will always treat this as dislocation one. The first, this one would be treated as dislocation one. This is uh, because when we use the notation one and two, so that you are clear on which particular dislocation we are talking about. So this will be treated as one, meaning the one is the, dislocation one would be the one which due to which effect is being created onto another dislocation, which will be treated as dislocation two. So it need not be just one dislocation. It could be bunch of dislocations, which are, together at some distance and together they have probably some stress field which is causing forces on this dislocation. So again, there will be FX, FY and FZ. And again, in this context, this would be treated as one. So overall this effect, this bunch would be called F, uh, one and this dislocation. So if we are defining budger vector and uh, line vectors, then it uh, we will call the budger vector and line vector for this one as two. And overall, whatever quantities we define for this one would be defined as one. And this overall, treatment can also help us understand how much, for example, if this is a dislocation forest or some configuration of dislocation and you want this dislocation to move, then you know this, uh, this overall formalism would help us understand how much force 
it needs to overcome how much or how much external force is up needed to overcome this internal forces internal resistance so this formalism would also help us understand how much external force is needed for dislocation to to overcome internal resistance in this context we have the relation which is called as peach kohler relation so here it is given force again you remember this is per unit length sigma it is the stress field being generated so here the sigma for the, this case it would be generated by one dislocation one or in this case it can be uh, stress being generated because of bunch of dislocation so you may be able to calculate the overall stress because of this bunch of dislocation and based on that you would find out what will be the force acting on this and the b and a line vector that is given is for dislocation two so we are calculating the force on two on dislocation two whose berger vector and line vector are given here and now i will say that explicitly mention what is f f is the force per unit length at any point on dislocation 2 sigma is the stress experienced by dislocation 2 but it may be generated by this bunch of dislocation or it may be generated by dislocation 1 but it is being experienced by dislocation 2 and berger vector b is the berger vector berger's vector for shin 2 and line vector is e is the line for dislocation 2 so you can see that based on this what we get if we put in the sigma in the tensor form so it has nine quantities b is a vector so it is bx by bz and line vector is again a vector so epsilon x uh, eta actually eta uh, e i don't know it is not eta uh, sigma dot b cross e so let's call it e so it is ex ey ez and uh, sigma has the nine quantities and this is how it will be written when you want to calculate the forces acting per unit length on dislocation 2 when the dislocation density increases in the material then this stress increases and in turn the force acting on the dislocation 2 would increase so this is you can say the origin of strengthening when you have higher dislocation density and if one needs to deform the material one needs to apply external stress and that must overcome these internal stresses so it also means that if you want to deform for a material further and further as its dislocation density increases you need to apply higher and higher stresses which is also called as strain hardening hence a larger stress is required to cause similar strain when dislocation density has increased so this is uh, something we can qualitatively see right now and we would be also able to establish this quantitatively in few minutes so when you have uh, sigma dot b then we can basically this becomes
So it is a dot product. So we can as well write it as I sigma j sigma i j into b k. And this is for the sigma dot b part. And when you put it together, you would see this will come out like this, which is if I write it, uh, so I, what I will do is also write it in terms of X, Y, Z and also write it in terms of one, two, three, because at many places it will be easier to handle this uh, quantity in terms of one, two, three. So it will be sigma one, one, B one, sigma one, two, B two, sigma one, three, B three. Sigma two one B one, sigma two two B two, sigma two three B three, sigma three one B one, sigma three two B two, sigma three three B three. So this is sigma dot B and uh, in terms of one two three, and this is sigma dot B in terms of x y z, and then we take a cross product of with line vector e x e y e z are the vectors, and this is the overall form. And in terms of x, y, z, and again, I will write it also in terms of one, two, three. Sigma two, one, B one, plus sigma two, two, B two, plus sigma two, three, B three. Sigma three, one, B one, plus sigma three, two, B two, plus sigma three, three, B three. Sigma one, one, B one, plus sigma one, two, B two, plus sigma one, three, B three. And this is three, one, two, and then there is, second term over here. So you see, this is a vector. Keep in mind, this is not no more a uh, determinant or a tensor quantity. It has only three values because force will is a vector fx, fy, fz. And over here we have sigma three one, b one, plus sigma three two, b two, Sigma one one B one plus sigma one two B two plus sigma one three B three and three and this last one is sigma two one B one plus sigma two two B two plus sigma two three B three. So this is the overall quantity. And like I mentioned, now we can look at this equation in two different forms. So this is x, y, z, and this is in one, two, three. So one, two, three basically represents x, y, z respectively. But at many places, this one will become much easier or to look at and also in terms of writing. So both of them are one and the same quantity and we, it will give you the value of forces acting on dislocation two because of stress field, which may be generated because of this is the stress field quantities, which may be generated because of a single dislocation or a group of dislocation, or maybe even external forces. So whatever be the source of the sigma, this is affecting the dislocation two, whose budget vector are given by B1, B2, B3, and E1, E2, E3, or BX, BY, BZ, and EX, EY, EZ are the line vectors. So to be able to appreciate this better, what we will do is we will go through some case studies. So let's look at case study number one. What is this case study? Here, we are looking at interaction between two positive edge dislocations. So what do we mean by this? So let's say we have dislocation one here, another dislocation over here. So if we have, so this is one and uh, 
dislocation. So let's say this is affecting the dislocation two. So this is one and here we have epsilon and I will write as one over here on the superscript one equal to zero zero one and sorry the line vector again I will put the superscript one which will be which has to be perpendicular to this so it could be anywhere on this two but to make things simple we will take it as one zero zero and this is dislocation two so this one is also parallel so epsilon e2 is equal to zero zero one and again to make things keep things simple we will keep the Berger vector one zero zero so what we are saying is b2 x is equal to one b1 x is equal to one and b1 y b1 z are zero similarly here e1 z is equal to one and e1 x y is e1 x is equal to e1 y is equal to zero similarly e2 x is equal to zero e2 y is equal to zero e2 z is equal to one so that we have to keep in mind when we are solving this now we'll put this so we know that in this equation what we are look uh, what we what we get in terms of Berger vector is for dislocation two so the only two quantities which are non-zero are ez and bx so only those quantities will remain and that would mean that this would be here this would be here but this is uh, this is zero so the whole quantity goes to zero this whole quantity goes to zero this whole quantity goes to zero and this whole goes to zero and even in this only bx is non-zero by is zero bz is zero here also bx is there by is non-zero bz is non-zero so what we get is f is equal to sigma yx dx and to be sure i will now put the superscript 2 and uh, the second quantity is minus sigma x x and then again and sorry there is also this uh, e component which is ez which is also for 2 and here similarly e sigma xx and bx which is again superscript 2 so keep in mind this is not square this is superscript 2 to define that this will be to inform us that this is for dislocation 2 and this is e z again 2 and the third one there is no nothing left so it is 0 now this is fx this is fy this is fz and also per unit length okay i'm not i'm not explicitly mentioning it again and again but that you have to keep in mind so if that is so then this is equal to fx this is fy and this is fz so this is glide force acting on it because if this is the force acting in the x direction what whichever direction positive or negative this is called the glide force so this is glide force acting here fy is acting in this direction which we will call we can call climb force acting on this but we will not consider at this time about the or not worry much about the climb force because one that climb force will also be dependent on temperature so it is not only this force that has to be taken into account but also the temperature and moreover in room temperature deformation this would anyways be of uh, uh, non-significant unless we are applying temperature also over, or unless we are applying uh, doing that deformation at high temperature okay so with that what we see is that uh, we have this quantity light which is sigma yx and uh, just for the sake of completion we will look at the whole equation how it looks like so which is sigma xx and therefore f x is equal to now sigma yx 
sigma y x we will remember is equal to g and it since it is a Berger vector has only one quantity which is x but this time this x is for first dislocation so it is superscript one and it is x square minus y square and into this b2 which is and epsilon z e sorry e z but we know that it is equal to one so we'll just multiply it one and on the denominator we have two pi one minus neo x square plus y square whole square and f y again is sigma xx but with a minus sign so it is g b x again uh, superscript then we have y then 3x square plus y square and there is a 2 pi 1 minus nu x square plus y square whole square and also this is a negative quantity in itself so overall it will become a positive quantity and it has again bx superscript 2 into 1 and uh, yes something i'm missing here and it has to be x there's a factor x here so this is the glide force and this is the climb force acting on the dislocation Now, we will concentrate on this particular equation, which is for the glide, because this one will give us a lot more information about interaction between dislocations. So we are looking at the interaction between two positive edge dislocation, and we know that these are the two forces. And now we have said that climb is something that we can uh, we are not really interested in because it is a high temperature phenomena. Now bringing this equation over here. And assuming that both the budget vectors are um, equal in magnitude. So if we have the two budget vectors uh, in the same with the same sign, then fx will be equal to gb square x x square minus y square by 2 pi 1 minus nu x square plus y square whole square. When both dislocations have same sign. And if both the dislocations have happen to be of opposite sign, then we know that this will be, and there will be a negative, sorry, here it is. It will be, one will be negative, and therefore the fx will be equal to minus gb square x, x square minus y square by two pi one minus nu x square plus y square whole square when both dislocations are of opposite sign. Now here, if we assume that the two dislocations are on the same plane, which means y is equal to zero. So now let's go to the condition where, okay. When And dislocations on same glide plane 
meaning y is equal to zero. So if you put y equal to zero in all this, what we get is fx is equal to gb square and this one will become x cube and this will be x4. So this will get canceled and there will be only x remaining in the denominator. So it will become two pi one minus nu into x or I can write it like this, <clears throat> which will have plus when these locations are of same sign, minus when, when these locations of opposite sign. So what is the meaning or significance of having a plus and a minus? So plus implies that the four, the dislocations would try to move in opposite direction and minus implies that the dislocations would try to move in oppose in the, uh, towards each other. So it would look something like this. So if the dislocations are like this, then the forces acting on them would be like this, repel. So now you can see I've drawn it on the same plane. And if the dislocations happen to be of opposite sign, so this is how it would look like. In this case, the dislocations would attract each other. So dislocations of same sign will repel and that of opposite sign will attract. This is the main message that we get from this uh, relation. But then we could have also obtained this uh, relation in a slightly different way. Let's look at it in a more without going through these equations, but then there will be some meaning for these equations, which I will show you again after this. So interaction, uh, the attraction and repulsion can also be predicted on the basis of energy. So when two dislocations of same sign are sitting next to each other, so let's first consider the case of when two dislocations of same sign are sitting next to each other. What, what is the implication? The implication is the equivalent Berger vector would become 2b because those two are sitting very close to each other. So it is as good as saying that the two dislocations are, so this will have equivalent Berger's vector of 2b. And therefore, the energy for this new dislocation would be of the order of g into 2b whole square, which would be of the order, would, would be of, the order of 4gb square. However, if the two dislocations were very far apart, very independent of each other, then their energy would have been gb square and gb square, meaning total energy would have been 2gb square. So this is energy 4gb square is certainly greater than 2gb square when independent. And certainly as any system does not like the energy to increase, therefore the dislocations will 
tend to stay away. Now let's uh, move on to another case when the opposite extreme, when the two dislocations of opposite signs are sitting next to each other. So in this case, what will happen now that the two purges vector, uh, the two dislocations are sitting like this. So this has B and this is minus B, which means the total is equal to zero, zero B. So equivalent Berger vector is now equal to zero. which means that the energy is of the order of G into zero square, which is equal to zero is less than two GB square when the dislocations were independent. So what is the message here? That the dislocations will attract each other. So dislocations with opposite B will attract and annihilate while dislocations with same or similar sign will repel each other. That is the message that we get when we look at this consideration of dislocations being uh, on the basis of the dislocation energy. So this is also the message that we obtained earlier when we were looking at the force. So it's not that the force relation is useless or meaningless. We will look at still another example of force. So now we will again bring our equation fx equal to gb square. And look at more analysis. When dislocations not on same glide plane. Meaning y is not equal to zero. Okay, so earlier case was the simpler case where we said that y is equal to zero. But now let's say y is not equal to zero, then what happens? So we will go back to our equation, which says that fx is equal to gb square x. And plus or minus would depend on whether we have uh, the same sign or the opposite sign, which we will look at in a moment. Two pi one minus nu x square plus y square. Whole square. Now, so y is not equal to zero. And let's try to plot the relation Okay, so I have drawn a xy plot. Because what I want to do is I want to plot on the x axis uh, distance but uh, I want to plot a distance in a way which will take into account both X and Y. So what I will do is let's keep Y fixed and I will write X in terms of Y.
and on the y axis i will have force specifically fx so this is fx which will have which will be drawn in the which we can say this is a constant gb1 gb and b2 by 2 pi 1 minus nu y now let's say we have the x as equal to 1y or 2y or 3y or 4y or in the negative side we have minus 1y minus 2y minus 3y minus 4y in what it means is that we have a configuration which looks like this so this is the first dislocation and the second dislocation we keep the y fixed So the dislocation, second dislocation can be here, it can be here, it can be here. And this particular location would be of very big interest to us. So let me draw this. So this is 45 degrees. Now what happens at 45 degrees if you, which means at x equal to y. So when you put x equal to y, we see that fx become equal to zero. And we are, uh, for now, we are considering positive dislocations or dislocations with same sign. Therefore, we are only interested in, or only the plus sign of the force comes into picture. So when we have x equal to y, then force becomes zero. So let's say this is the point. And when x is equal to zero, then also what we would see that this is, there is a factor x here, therefore this whole thing goes to zero. So at these two points, we know that the forces are zero. What happens in between? Now, let's say at you are little less than x equal to y, meaning you are left of this position. So what will happen? So x is less than one y, therefore this, is, this quantity is x square, this is y square, this whole thing is still positive and this whole thing is positive, but then x square minus y square is a negative quantity. Therefore, this whole thing becomes negative. So the force is acting in another direction, which means that the force is acting in this direction to the dislocation as soon as it moves away from the 45 degree position and the force is going somewhere over here. So assuming that there will be a minima somewhere over here because it has to come back to this. So the force would the force plot would look like this. And uh, if you go to the negative side, you would see a similar symmetric one where it will have a positive ma maxima and the dislocation would want to move in that direction. And if you keep plotting and taking the value, various values, what you would see is that this will get a relation like this. What does, what, what do we obtain from this? What does this uh, plot tell us? This plot tells us that when you have a dislocation over here, then it is some sort of equilibrium. But as soon as you move a little bit less left to the left, then this whole quantity becomes negative and the force starts to act in the negative direction. As soon as you make x greater than y, therefore everything becomes positive and the force acts in the opposite direction and therefore a positive force will act. Now let's come to the position where x is equal to zero, which is right over here. So again, let me draw this. So at this position, it is equal to zero. Now, as soon as you move a little to the right, so you have a little x positive, but it is still less than y, much actually much less than y. Therefore, the force is still negative. 
So if you move a little bit to the over here, then it is still has force acting in this direction. And if you move a little bit to the left, then it still has forces acting to the right, which means that the forces are trying to keep the dislocation aligned along this line, zero degree line. And it is for this reason that we see uh, low angle grain boundaries with dislocations aligned like this. So the dislocations have the tendency because of the interaction between the dislocations, they are being pulled back to this location. But once it uh, dislocation moves out at uh, from 45 degree position, then it will get thrown off. Then it will not be considered anymore in the array. It will get pushed off. So there is a V-shape region within which, which is equal to 45 degree and 45 degree, 90 degree region within which the dis second dislocation lies. Then it is try it. Then it uh, has a force acting on it, which tries to bring it back and bring it back uh, to the alignment exactly in the line. And once it goes outside that V region, then it is pushed off. Then you are no more, my friend. You can go away. It is like that kind of. Uh, state condition between the two dislocations. And when you have more and more, it gets aligned and forms an array like this. So this is what happens when you have all positive dislocations. But then what will happen if I have uh, two negative dislocations, pair of dislocations with opposite sign? Let's see, it will be very interesting. And uh, what I will do is I will again plot this separately. I don't want this to get messy. And this time I will draw the dislocations in a different color. So again, Y distance is fixed. And this is the This is the distance X and at some angle, which is equal to 45, which is of interest. And here, if you plot the graph, you would see, okay, first let me put one Y, two Y, three Y, four Y. And over here, minus one Y, minus two Y, minus three Y, minus four Y. Now, if I put it like this, then uh, and use the equation here again, but this time the dislocations are of opposite sign. So the negative one will be in picture. And from this relation or from this, you can see it will be symmetric of this, just inverted symmetry. So the plot we will get would look something like this. <clears throat> So it will be zero here, it will be zero here, it will be zero here. Only it will have maxima over here and it will have a minima over here. And if you plot it further, you will have something like this and you will have something like this. Now let's look at what is the meaning of this. So what it means, is that if you are at 45 degrees, then of course it is equilibrium. Although we'll show it is uh, in the previous case, we saw it was an unstable equilibrium. Now, if the dislocation moves a little bit to the left, say left somewhere over here, what will happen? There is a positive force acting on it, positive meaning in this direction. So the forces are trying to bring it to this position. And if the dislocation moves, away from one Y or X is greater than one Y, then it is over here and the forces are acting in this direction. Meaning now they are trying to bring the dislocation into equilibrium in this position. So this 45 degree line becomes the stable equilibrium position. Earlier, this was an unstable equilibrium position. It, in this particular case where we had positive dislocations, then 
dislocation would try to move away from this in this direction or in that direction and the positive the stable equilibrium was over here but now we have a stable equilibrium over here and if you look closely what you would see is that there is a unstable equilibrium over here from this plot you can see that if the dislocation moves a little to the positive x then it has forces acting in the positive direction and if it moves a little to the left it has forces acting in the negative direction and there will also be a equilibrium stable equilibrium direct position over here at minus 45 degrees So this is a stable equilibrium. This is a stable equilibrium. Meaning the forces want to bring the dislocation back to this position while this one is a unstable equilibrium. And now that we are talking in terms of stable equilibrium and unstable equilibrium, let me also mention here that this one is stable equilibrium and this one and there will also be some here at minus 45 degree these are unstable equilibrium this equation which is telling us the force acting on the dislocation can also be used to derive the uh, taylor harding relation but for now here what it is showing us the forces required for forces acting on this dislocation or in other words how much force would be required for this dislocation to move in the presence of another dislocation so what we realize is that a positive dislocation would form an array like this and a negative dislocation would also form an array, but at 45 degrees. So this one, if you look at, it would form an uh, array, something like this. So this is just part of it, but next line would again be all positive at 45 degrees and so on. So this is the condition we have looked at where dislocations uh, two positive as dislocations are interacting next we will move on to another case study where two screw dislocations are acting so for the two screw dislocations again we need to define what are the line vectors so for dislocation one and dislocation two we you know that here i will put it as a superscript is equal to zero zero one and berger vector for this one is equal to because it is a screw dislocation it has to be same as the line dislocation and again we are taking a case of two parallel screw dislocations okay so parallel screw dislocation and therefore e2 superscript 2 is equal to 0 0 1 and berger vector superscript 2 is equal to 0 0 1 and the force acting on dislocation two would be, this is the general relation. So this is what would be the force acting on the dislocation two. Over here, the Berger vector and the line vector are with respect to dislocation two. So it has only Z component or basically epsilon two Z is equal to one b superscript z is equal to 1 and 
since only ez and bz are there so all other quantities would get cancelled out or basically they turn to zero then again bz is the only quantity here all other go to zero bx by bx by they all go to zero and what we are left with is f and remember this is a vector so there are one two three quantities here sigma yz ez ez and i will put the superscript 2 to distinguish the fact that it is uh, the Berger vector and line vector for dislocation 2. Of course, in our case, it happens to be same in magnitude, but we want to keep things distinguished. And here we will have sigma xz with a minus sign and again bz superscript 2 ez superscript 2 and line vector 0. So this is the force acting on the dislocation and like we mentioned earlier this is fx which is the glide force and fy which is the climb force. So again we are interested only in the glide force and here the yz So if we go back, we will see that G and there is Berger vector for, and we, if we take the magnitude, we have to take only the magnitude of, uh, since it is only Z, so B superscript one Z by two pi into cos theta by R. And here into B, which is equal to Z superscript two and E we will take as one. And cos theta we know can be so I will now just write b1, b2, and cos theta can be written as cos theta by r can be written as x by x square plus y square. So this is the force acting on the glide force acting on the screw dislocation two. And here also what we see is that when dislocations of same sign, then fx greater than zero, which means repel. When dislocations of opposite sign, then fx is less than zero attract. So this is the uh, relation or the forces acting between two parallel screw dislocation. And here also we see that the same thing turns up. The dislocations of same sign will repel and the dislocations of opposite sign will attract. And again, we could have used the same argument of energy also, and we would have obtained the same relation. So, Overall, we can say whenever dislocations are of same sign, they will attract and whenever, sorry, they will repel and whenever dislocations are of opposite sign, they will attract and they can also annihilate each other. In fact, this is also something that happens uh, very often at higher temperature where recovery is taking place. Dislocations get annihilated. Next, what we will look at is the interaction between a 
screw dislocation and edge dislocation where the line direction is same. So this would be very interesting as you would see. So here we will write So this is dislocation one, which we will be calling as, so this is our edge and this is screw. And uh, line vector is same. So we will have E1 equal to zero, zero, one and the line vector, the directions, they are parallel. Again, I have not mentioned it explicitly, but we are considering the case of parallel dislocation. So epsilon subscript two is also equal to zero, zero, one. And here it is edge dislocation. So Berger vector is equal to one, zero, zero. And here the dislocation screw dislocation. So the Berger vector will also be as same as the line vector. Okay, so now we have, we know that in the, this is the force, we are basically calculating effect of edge dislocation on screw dislocation. And uh, since we are talking only of two dislocation, it will be the same force that will be acting on from the screw dislocation onto the edge dislocation. So that will not change. Now that we have this relation, we will, look at uh, what are the quantities that will go down to zero. So here we have only EZ and here we have only BZ. Every other quantity must go to zero. Therefore, this whole quantity goes to zero. This whole goes to zero. This whole goes to zero. This whole goes to zero. And BZ uh, is the only non-zero element. So BX, BY would also go to zero over here and over here. And therefore, the force that we obtained earlier is same here or there, but there will be one major difference as we'll note. Sigma yz bz, where bz is for the two, ez for the two. And then we have sigma xz, bz2, ez2, and the third quantity is zero. Okay, so it looks like it is all same as the previous one and nothing is new. Okay, then let's try to find out what would be the sigma yz. Now remember this sigma yz is because of edge dislocation. Sigma xz is because of edge dislocation. But for an edge dislocation, xz and yz and zx and zy are non-existent quantities, meaning they are zero. Which means that the total force acting is equal to zero. There is no force acting on the screw dislocation because of the edge dislocation or vice versa. That is no force is acting on the edge dislocation because of the screw dislocation. So let me, no force or vice versa, meaning no interaction. Now, isn't that very interesting? So why is it that a screw dislocation and an edge dislocation, which are parallel to each other, do not interact with each other? Okay, I will leave you with that thought, with that question, 
So look into that, try to find a reason why there should be no interaction. Only when we are talking about, so I have been, this, this calculation I've shown is when they are parallel. Need not be true when they are perpendicular to each other or at some other angle. Okay, so keep that in mind. Only when they are parallel to each other, anywhere, they, it doesn't matter. If they are parallel, then we have shown that there is no interaction, there is no force acting on either of them because of the other one. So why is it so? It is for you to find out. So I will end this lecture over here. Thank you.